Okay, so good morning, students. I am Francisco M. Kaliwan Jr. And welcome to this session. So this session is about IAS 41 Agriculture. Um, to start, um, the objective of IAS 41 is to prescribe the accounting treatment and disclosures related to agricultural activity. Okay, so now let's discuss the scope of IAS 41 Agriculture. So this standard shall be applied to account for, number one, biological assets except bearer plants. Later, we will discuss what are biological assets and bearer plants and why um, bearer plants are scoped out um, from IAS 41. And then agricultural produce at the point of harvest. Um, Agricultural produce are the harvested produce of uh, the biological assets. But IAS 41 will only be applied to agricultural produce up to the point of harvest. So this standard um, does not deal with the processing of agricultural produce after harvest. For example, the milling of palay into rice, although considered as well an agricultural activity, um, is no longer covered by this standard. So another standard will apply for that process. Um, uh, government grants related to biological assets are also under IS41. But you know, um, what is important here is that these assets will only be accounted for using IAS41 when they relate to agricultural activity, meaning if the entity um, is not into agricultural activity, these assets, if the entity has these assets, will not be accounted for using IAS41, using IAA, other um, standards. Next, what are the other assets related to agricultural activity uh, that are scoped out from IAS41? Number one, land. Of course, we know that land will be accounted for using either 16 PPE or 40 investment property. Also, we have bearer plants. Um, actually, in 2014, yeah, in 2014, IASB um, amended IAS 16 to include bearer plants. So only in 2014 that bearer plants are scoped out from 41 and included in 16 PPE. Um, prior to that, bearer plants are still covered um, by 41. And then governments, uh, government grants related to bearer plants, we have um, IAS 20, accounting for government grants and disclosure of government assistance. And then we also have intangible assets. Um, this Assets are accounted for using 38 intangible assets. And finally, right of use assets arising from a lease of land related to agricultural activity. We have IFR 16 for that. So what is now an agricultural activity? Um, agricultural activity is the management by an entity of biological transformation. That's number one and harvest of biological assets, that's number two, for what? For sale or for conversion into agricultural produce or another biological assets. So two processes are involved in order for an activity to be considered as agricultural activity. There is a management of biological transformation and harvest of the biological assets. Um, Biological transformation comprises the processes of growth, degeneration, production, and procreation um, that cause qualitative or quantitative changes in biological assets. Um, for us to under, understand clearly um, agricultural activity, let's give an um, example. So examples of agricultural activity are uh, raising livestock, forestry, annual or perennial cropping, cultivate, uh, cultivating plantations, floriculture, and aquaculture. So um, 
agricultural activity covers a diverse range of activities. Um, certain common features exist within this diversity. So there are common features of agricultural activity. Number one is the capability to change. Number two is the management of change. And number three is the measurement of change. When we say capability to change, um, biological assets are capable of biological transformation. Um, when we say management of change, um, it means that um, the biological transformation of the biological assets are being managed. Um, that's why ocean fishing is different from fish farming. And fish farming is considered as agricultural activity, whereas ocean fishing is not. Why? Um, the difference between ocean fishing and fish farming is that in, in fish farming, we manage the growth, the um, production, the procreation, in short, the biological transformation of the assets. Whereas in ocean fishing, we do not fish, uh, we do not feed the fishes in the ocean before we harvest them. Tama? So there is no management of change in ocean fishing. Therefore, ocean fishing is not considered as an agricultural activity. And finally, we have measurement of change. Um, there are two changes actually in agricultural activity. Number one is uh, change in quality, and number two is uh, change in quantity. Uh, change in quantity. Um, it's easy. So the number. See, for example, the number of um, agricultural produce, the number of mango fruits. Um, in the mango tree, whereas uh, change in quality, referring to the same example, um, the ripeness of the mango fruits. So there are two changes which are um, to be measured as um, part of the features of agricultural activity. Okay, so what is now a biological asset? According to IAS 41, biological asset is a living animal or plant. But we should remember that IAS 41 does not only apply to biological assets, um, it also applies to agricultural produce. So for us to understand better the classifications of the asset in IAS 41, which are biological assets and agricultural produce, let's have this diagram. Okay, so for animals, we have bearer animals and consumable animals. Um, the definition of bearer animals is residual in nature. If it is not a uh, consumable animal, then it is a bearer animal. So let's define first consumable animals. Consumable animals are those that are harvested as agricultural produce or sold as biological assets. Um, for example, um, livestock intended for the production of meat, livestock held for sale, or fish in farms. So consumable animals are accounted for first using AS41 up to the point of harvest and um, after the point of harvest when it is already held for sale accounted for using IAS2 whereas bare animals are accounted for using IAS41. Now for plants we also have bearer plants and consumable plants. So same with um, consumable animals. Consumable plants are those that are to be harvested as agricultural produce or sold as biological asset. For example, um, crops such as maize and wheat produced on bearer plant and trees being grown for lumber. So consumable plants, same with Consumable animals are accounted for first using IS-41 up to the point of harvest and after such accounted for using IAS-2. Whereas bearer plants, as mentioned earlier, accounted for using IAS-16 PPE. Now, for agricultural produce, we need to classify further the agricultural produce as number one, growing on bearer plants, number two, harvested at the point of harvest, and number three, harvested after the point of harvest. 
um, growing on bearer plants or agricultural produce attached to the bearer plants are accounted for use in 41. Whereas harvested agricultural produce at the point of harvest are accounted for also using 41, while harvested agricultural produce after the point of harvest are accounted for using IAS2. Okay, so for example, um, biological assets, we have sheep, agricultural produce, we have wool, and products after harvest, we have blankets or jackets. Um, other examples, um, grapevine, they are biological assets, agricultural produce, uh, the harvested grapes, and then product after harvest, uh, raisins or grape seed extracts or wines. Also, Nara tree or Nara plantation, Nara tree in the Nara plantation, so agricultural produce, um, felled tree, and then product after harvest, furnitures or Plum. Okay, so now let's discuss bearer plants. So according to IAS 41, bearer plants are used in the production or supply of agricultural produce, expected to bear produce for more than one accounting period, and remote. there is a remote likelihood of being sold as agricultural produce. Okay, so let's discuss the definition one by one. Um, first, used in production or supply of agricultural produce. Um, say for example, the company is um, mango plantation, okay? So, mango trees in the plantation are classified as bearer plants. Now, it is not impossible that other than mango trees, there are other trees growing in the plantation. Say for example, there are mahogany trees or nara trees. Now, these trees, since they do not bear mangoes, okay, they are not reported or they are not uh, classified as bearer plants. If the company would recognize these trees as assets, well, they may be reported as just freestanding trees which are classified as biological asset, not bearer plants. Okay, next expected to bear produce for more than one accounting period. That is why um, annual crops, example of annual crops, um, corn, um, cassava, palay, kamote, they are annual crops. They, uh, they bear produce in just maybe less than a year. Uh, I think corns are harvested every three months. So they do not uh, bear produce for more than one accounting period. Therefore, they are not bearer plants. So only those that bear produce for more than one accounting period are reported as bearer plants. Now, the third definition, there is a remote likelihood of being sold as agricultural produce Therefore, plants cultivated to be harvested as agricultural produce, say for example, um, trees grown for use as lumber. So the purpose is um, for use as lumber. So they are not bearer plants. Because the, the condition is there must be a remote likelihood to be sold as agricultural produce. Another example, Plants cultivated to produce agricultural produce when there is more than a remote likelihood that the entity will also harvest and sell the plant as agricultural produce other than incidental scrap sales. Example, trees that are cultivated both for their fruit and for their lumber. Also, they are not bearer plants. Okay? Um, additional to that definition, when bearer plants are no longer used to bear produce, they might be cut down and sold as scrap, for example, for use as firewood. Such incidental scrap sales would not prevent the plant from satisfying the definition of bearer plant. You know, this is common to plantations. So for example, in the mango plantation, um, there are old mango trees um, which are which no longer um, bear fruits. So what the company will do, 
these old mango trees are cut down and sold as scrap. So does that mean they are no longer reported as bearer plant? No, the standard is clear. Such incidental scrap sales would not prevent the plant from satisfying the definition of bearer plant, meaning before they are cut down, they are still reported as Okay, now the recognition of biological asset or agricultural produce in the books. So, the entity shall recognize a biological asset for agricultural produce when and only when, number one, the entity controls the asset as a result of past event. So, say for example, purchase of a dairy cattle. Now, how do we um, prove that the entity controls the asset? Well, maybe we can consider legal ownership of the cattle. Um, sometimes um, legal ownership of cattle is um, proven by branding or marking of the cattle. Yung ano, yung parang bakal na sinusunog and then tinatatak doon sa, may, sa katawan ng, ng baka. Okay? So that is controllership of the asset. The entity can demonstrate uh, control over the asset. Number two, probable inflow of economic benefits. So the future benefits are normally assessed by measuring the significant physical attributes. And finally, the fair value or the cost of the asset can be reliably measured. So these three must be um, evident before an entity can okay so now the measurement of biological assets and agricultural produce um, according to the standard a biological asset shall be measured on initial recognition and at the end of its reporting period at fair value less cost to sell um, whereas agricultural produce harvested from an entity's biological assets shall be measured at its fair value, less cost to sell at the point of harvest. And then that measurement, fair value, less cost to sell at the point of harvest, is the cost at that date when applying IAS2 inventories, meaning the fair value, less cost to sell at the point of harvest of the agricultural produce will be the deemed cost once the agricultural produce are reclassified as inventory. Now, talking about fair value, According to IFRS 13, fair value is the price that would be received to sell an asset or paid to transfer a liability in an orderly transaction between market participants at measurement date. So we need to understand what is the market for biological assets and agricultural produce. Is it the farm itself or the market, uh, meaning the the wet market for the city market. Well, um, using IAS 41, um, the market for biological assets and agricultural produce must be the place wherein willing buyers and willing seller are found. Um, in the case of, say, um, um, mango plantation, okay? The market for agricultural produce or the mango fruits of a mango plantation is not the market in the city or in or the wet market or the fruit market, but the farm itself. You know what? Um, willing buyers would go to the farm to buy the harvested fruits, harvested mango fruits. And therefore, the farm is already considered as the active market or mango fruits. Okay? Now, how about cost to sell? Cost to, cost to sell are incremental costs directly attributable to the disposal of an asset, excluding finance costs and income taxes. So, cost to sell include broker's commissions, levies by regulatory authorities, and transfer taxes and duties. However, they do not include cost of getting the asset to a market. So the transportation cost of um, bringing the harvested mango fruits 
to the city market, to the fruit market, um, is not a cost to sell. Therefore, it's not deducted from the fair value to determine the fair value less cost to sell. Now, is fair value less cost to sell the same with NRV, net realizable value, which is used in inventories? The answer is no, because fair value less cost to sell is based on um, the prices at the measurement date, meaning it's based on current prices, whereas NRV or net realizable value is based on future price, estimated selling price, and estimated cost to sell. Now, some issues about fair value. Um, biological assets are often physically attached to land, for example, trees in a plantation forest. There may be no separate market for biological assets that are attached to the land, but an active market may exist for the combined asset, that is, biological assets, raw land, land improvements as a package. So an entity may use information regarding the combined assets to measure the fair value of the biological assets. For example, the fair value of raw land and land improvements may be deducted from the fair value of the combined assets to arrive at the fair value of the biological asset. Okay? So now, final question for the measurement. Um, is fair value always reliably measurable? Now, According to paragraph 30 of this standard, there is a presumption that fair value can be measured reliably for biological asset. So, ang assumption, measurable lagi. However, that presumption can be rebutted only on initial recognition for biological asset for which quoted market prices are not available and for which alternative fair value measurements are determined to be clearly unreliable. In such case, that biological asset shall be measured at its cost less accumulated depreciation and accumulated impairment loss. So, revert to the cost. Okay. So, now in relation to measurement um, is gain or loss. So, according to paragraph 26, a gain or loss arising on initial recognition of a biological assets at fair value less cost to sell and from a change in fair value less cost to sell what biological asset shall be included in profit or loss in period in which it arises. Now, when can uh, loss or gain um, arise? Um, according to the standard, a loss may arise on initial recognition of a biological asset because cost to sell are deducted in determining fair value less cost to sell of a biological asset. That's why um, we should not be um, surprised if um, on initial recognition, we, already, we can already recognize loss for biological assets simply because um, biological assets are recognized even on initial recognition at fair value less cost to sell. So we have the concept of cost to sell, which uh, would result to loss on initial recognition. But um, again, um, may also be recognized on initial recognition because of a newborn animal. So say for example, when a calf is born, so again may be um, recognized. So again or loss arising on initial recognition of agricultural produce, at fair value, less cost to sell, shall be included in profit or loss for the period in which it arises. A gain or loss may arise on initial recognition of agricultural produce as a result of, and now finally, the change in fair value, less cost to sell. Um, according to the standard, um, the fair value, less cost to sell of a biological asset can change due to price change and physical change. Although the standard um, does not require entities to separate the disclosure of price change and physical change, but it may be useful, um, especially to the users, to separate the disclosure of price change and physical change. So this slide actually um, will focus on um, the definition of these changes. So for price change, 
um, it's the change in price of the biological asset um, at different um, dates. So say for example, if the price of a newborn cattle on January 1 is different from the price of a newborn cattle on December 31, then there is a price change. Whereas for physical change, it's um, the differences, the difference of um, the price of um, an, a biological asset with different age on the same date. So say, for example, the price of a newborn cattle on December 31 is different from the price of one-year-old cattle on December 31. Okay? So that is accounting for agriculture according to IAS 41. Thank you and good day.